Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Nation. For today's episode, we're going to be going over a new, well, it's not exactly new, but the concept's new on the channel, where I'm going to be describing and explaining how exactly to go about using the buffer method, as I kind of deemed it. I played around with a few names for the overall method, but the buffer method just seems to make the most sense uh, and correlates well with the best with what it actually is. Some of you guys, especially the veterans, probably already have an idea as to how exactly do this or might already be doing it yourself. Uh, but this is a video that I actually meant to do all the way back when PvP first came out in the first place. Um, but because of the lack of medals uh, that fit the criteria that were out at the time, on top of the fact that I just never got around to actually doing the video, um, now it just seemed like a good time to, well, have the video come out. So that's what we'll be going over today. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the video. All right, so to explain everything in this video, we're actually gonna be going into Photoshop, uh, just like with my other competitive guides. I'll basically be going through everything step by step. Now, just to give you an idea of what exactly this method is, the general concept of the buffer method is to essentially, is honestly very similar to what the concept is of turtling which is the whole point of it is to grab whatever uh, buffs or debuffs they apply in one turn to have a carryover into another turn and take advantage of it. That's basically the entire point of the buffer method. Like I mentioned before, this method is similar to turtling and turtling is best used when you're going second, attacking second, so that way uh, your buffs can and debuffs can go and carry over into the next round uninterrupted in order to make the opponent deal less damage against you so that way you have a more effective way of winning. The goal, just like turtling, is to have your buffs or debuffs applied in one round and have it carry over into the next one. However, the main difference between turtling and the buffer method is instead of trying to make the opponent deal less damage against you, which is the whole point of turtling, the buffer method is a way to help you deal more damage against the opponent instead. Okay, it's, it's basically the exact opposite. Just like with the turtle method, uh, the same way how the only way to actually use the turtle method is by using turtle metals that have abilities that last for at least two or more turns, the buffer method works the exact same way, in which case you need to use metals who have buffs or debuffs for attacking purposes whose ability lasts for two or more turns. Uh, some easy example of these, uh, which are fairly recent, would be metals such as like a said Ghoul and Envy, which if you recall were the exact metals that I recommended amongst all five of the new foretellers, or even the new stained glass metals because their abilities do last for two turns. Just to show an example of what exactly I mean, let's take a look at a couple setups that I put together. So this right here is a very easy example of a couple Keyblade combinations that we could have within PvP, all right? On the left side of this picture right here, we have a Fenris setup, and then on the right side over here, we have a Treasure Trove setup, okay? I just kind of threw these together. They're not exactly built for optimal damage, but they, you know, these are, these can be used for just normal, casual damage setups, okay? Now, normally within PvP, you're pretty much going to need a setup similar to this where on almost every single Keyblade, you're going to need a main buffer debuffer metal such as like Kyrie EX Plus on each Keyblade to make sure each Keyblade can actually do decent damage. Uh, however, with the buffer method, the whole point of it is that taking Fenrir for example, let's just assume that the Fenrir Keyblade will be going first and that the Treasure Trove Keyblade will be going second. Okay, in this situation for the buffer method, what you can actually do then is that you replace the Kyrie EX Plus on the Fenrir and you give it a buffer metal for the buffer method, such as with Stained Glass number 7, for example, that just came out somewhat fairly recently. Because of the fact that its ability lasts for two turns, what that means is assuming that you get to keep all of the buffs and debuffs that it applies. Uh, you don't actually have to use the Kyrie EX Plus that's right here on round two for the treasure trove. So in that case, because you'll have all your strength buffs and debuffs, you won't need that. You can actually replace it with just another damage metal. Say, for example, like a Hercules B. This is essentially the entire concept and reasoning behind the buffer method. Uh, where normally, sure, 
Both of these setups are just fine as well, but because of the fact we can actually set up our uh, buffs and debuffs in advance, it allows our second Keyblade to do way more damage, even if it's just one extra metal that you replace uh, it with. Now for a slightly more complex example, I went ahead and grabbed two different Keyblades again, this time the Olympia and Divine Rose, which are completely different attributes this time. Beforehand, we had uh, purely power-based Keyblades, just for simplicity's sake to make it easier to understand, but this time we have a Olympia Keyblade, which is focused on speed and power, whereas we have Divine Rose, which is focused on speed and magic. So in this case, uh, assuming that you're using the buffer method, we have a Stained Glass number 9, which provides all of the speed buffs and debuffs needed for two turns. Because of this, and assuming Olympia is the first Keyblade to go, and that Divine Rose is second, because of this, the speed buffs and debuffs that are applied from the Olympia will be able to carry through and affect the Divine Rose over here, which will help out the speed slots right here in the second and fifth slot of the Keyblade. And because of this, we don't have to worry about having an entire another metal to provide those speed buffs or debuffs anymore, in which case we can run just the singular uh, stained glass number eight over here to provide the rest of the magic buffs and debuffs for the rest of the Keyblade instead. So in terms of these two Keyblades, for example, rather than needing multiple buffer or debuffer metals within each Keyblade, you would only need to run most of them on the first Keyblade, and then you can run a very minimal amount on the second Keyblade, which allows for you to apply more pure damage metals for more damage instead. That's the whole concept behind the buffer method. So in terms of how the buffer method would work in terms of attack and defense, uh, concept-wise, let's go ahead and go over that in terms of cons. For attacking, because of the fact that we are going to be attacking first on round one, uh, since we are the attacker, what will end up happening is that you apply, using the buffer method, you apply your buffs and debuffs, of course, turn one, and assuming that they get to stay and carry over, they will end up being able to carry over into turn Two. Now the great thing about the buffer method is that it can actually be used for both whether or not you're attacking first or attacking second. However, it does share a similarity with turtling in which that it is still best used when you're attacking second and that is simply because of the fact that there are metals within the game that can dispel or debuff your strength that the opponent can use and if you're attacking first that is a big weakness towards you. Um, and if this happens to happen, uh, what will end up happening is that all of your strength buffs um, will either be removed or you'll actually have no strength buffs whatsoever and it be debuffed instead. Uh, in which case you will not be doing any optimal damage at all whatsoever towards your opponent. You'll be doing way less damage than you actually should be doing. Some easy examples of metals that opponents can use to mess up your st this strategy, for example, are easy turtle metals such as Vexen Plus, Zexion Plus, even Demix Plus recently, uh, Prime Mrs. Incredible, and of course any of the Dispel metals such as like Man in Black or Incredibles Number 2. Any of these type of metals can be super detrimental towards the buffer strategy just because of the fact you're not going to have that extra set of buffer or debuffer metals within round two to make up for the loss that the opponent is going to be dealing to you, okay? So that's the main weakness for that. And it is exactly because of this that the buffer method, just like with turtling, is best used when you're attacking second. Such as in round two, they will get to stay and carry over because the fact you're attacking second, the opponent's not gonna be able to attack right back uh, immediately. Round three will start and then you get to take your turn again immediately still carrying those buffs and debuffs that you just applied. And it's because of this you can slap on that extra damage metal like I mentioned earlier in my examples which will allow you to deal much more optimal damage against the opponent which will let you do more damage than you normally would be doing in a normal typical setup. Now in terms of defense, the concept is the exact same thing, just slightly reversed in terms of turn order. For round one, because of the fact you are attacking second, that is the best case scenario for us, which means that we get to apply our buffs and debuffs. They will carry over into round two, 
we can slap on that extra damage metal on our second Keyblade, which will deal the more optimal damage against the opponent. Round two. Using the buffer method of round two is very similar to how it was attacking round one, in which case, because of the fact you are attacking first as the defender on round two, if you apply your buffs and debuffs here, they will get applied, but they're not guaranteed to carry over depending on what the opponent does, in which case you do run the risk of the opponent running some dispel or strength debuffer medals, uh, which can potentially make you lose your strength buffs, uh, in which case you'll have not nearly enough or you'll have less than you should have and you'll not be doing optimal damage. Now, although this strategy was possible when PvP first came out, uh, you had to have very specific metals in order to actually do it effectively. But now that more and more metals, uh, as I kind of predicted many months ago, ever since PvP was announced and such, are starting to come out whose abilities uh, provide buffs and debuffs that last for multiple turns, especially amongst the Organization 13 medals, uh, let alone all of the new medals coming out as well. It is slowly becoming easier and easier to now use the buffer method. But other than that, that was it for today, guys. I hope this video helped you out a lot. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to let me know in the comments section down below. If you still need more help on trying to understand how to effectively use this setup, feel free to join my Discord. Link is in the description below. Uh, there are tons of players in the Discord that will be more than happy to help you guys out. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button. It is the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Kinemar Team Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.